Hi, welcome back to Launch Communities. In our previous episode, we talked about HTML forms and we learned about some of the types of inputs that we see on our web pages. In this video, we will be continuing with the previous episode, that is the HTML forms. Now, before we continue, make sure you click on the subscription button to subscribe. Now, let's move on. We have our test editor here and we have a folder called forms. Now, let's drag the folder into our test editor to open it. And now, let's go ahead and create a new file called index.html. So we have created a new file index.html. Now let's go ahead and create the HTML brawler plate with shift exclamation enter. Now we have the HTML brawler plate created for us. There is a cool shortcut in our Visual Studio code. Right click and select open with live server. Now live server will open this file with your default browser. It's a very cool feature in uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code and you won't need to be refreshing your page anytime that you make changes on your page. Now those of you that you don't have live server installed in your Visual Studio Code, you will come back to your desktop the folder that you have created open the folder and you will see that the file that you created with the visual studio code is over here just double click on it to open it with your default browser but you have to make sure that you will be doing the refreshing yourself now let's move on to our visual studio code let's create an h1 tag that is a heading and name it uh, HTML forms because uh, that is what we will be doing. Now, if you remember in our previous episode, we learned that uh, inside the form element, we have multiple or you have different types of HTML input types. And we are going to continue with more of the input types in this very video so let's go ahead and call the form element let's go ahead and so this is a, our form element and inside this form element is where we will be putting the input element as we did in the previous episode so Let's continue with our input types. We have an input with a type checkbox like this. Now, if you remember, we said that the name attribute and the ID attribute, they are used for JavaScript and uh, PHP purposes. But for now, we are not going to uh, do that thing. So this is an input with a type checkbox now we use input with a type checkbox when we want a user to choose more than one option like sometimes uh, on a certain web page you will be asked a question and you'll be given more options and from the more options that you've been given you can choose three or four or even two of the options that we prefer so all these things were done with the input with the type checkbox now let's go back to our browser so now you can see that we have this very little box over here where we can click on it and check it so that is input with the type checkbox now let's make things more and more like natural 
Now let's bring up uh, the P element that is paragraph and let's say what music do you do you like do you like listening something like this question so what music do you like listening now with this question we want the user to to select more than one music so that means that uh, we can do that with the checkbox so let's say this checkbox has a name of uh, let's say hip hop and let's copy this one ctrl c come down and replace it let's say three times and change this one to uh let's say gospel gospel and let's change this one to uh let's say jazz so now with the input with the type checkbox you want the user to select more options or more than one option so the user can check this place and check the gospel too if he likes it so that is input with the type check box now let's go back to our browser and delete the input type and call another one we also have an input with the type radio now we use input with the type radio when we want the user to choose only one option from the list of options that we have given him or her that is something like uh, your gender sometimes you will be on a website and you'll be asked a question what is your gender you can see that this type of question you only have one choice to to sell to select so we do this thing with the input with the type radio that is we want the user to select only one option he has only one chance and now we have to remember that the input with the type radio always goes with an attribute called name so here name enter and you give it a description that is uh, pertaining to the data that you are collecting so here i can give it a description like like music like music now don't forget that uh the description of the input with the type radio can be different thing altogether. I mean, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to type music in your code as you are following this video. I mean, you can give it any name that you want, but you have to make sure that it has the name attributes with a value. And here, we can type like hip hop like this and copy. Let's paste it three times and let's change this place to uh, let me say hip life like this and let's change this one to afro now one thing that you should know is uh the value of this attribute that is the value of the name attribute should be the same across all the three input over here because if you change them let's say we change here to uh let's say like uh, something like top something like top that means that uh, the user can select different options so now let's go back to um, our music thing so let's go back to our browser and you can see that we have the radio buttons here and with the radio buttons, I can only select one option. Now, if I try to select the hip life two, you can see that uh, the hip hop has been on uh, on selected and something like this. So that is how these things are done when you see them on 
your web pages now let's move on and clean this input and uh, continue we also have an input input colon date that is we have an input with the type date and we use this input when we want to collect date data that is the data that is date so you can see that uh, in a date format let me say it that way you can see that the browser has inserted uh, something like a calendar inside the page that is we want the user to give us a data that is in the date format we use the input with the type date and that is very 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 simple and we also have an input with the type date time date time now the date time input is uh we use them in situations where we want the user to give us the date as long as with the time that is a date and a time that is when we want to collect date and time data from a user that is when we use such input now, let's clean okay let's clean everything and move on we also have an input with the type color we use this input type color when we want to collect color data that is a data that is color now don't forget that uh, with uh, browsers and with HTML and CSS colors they have unique names or they have unique numbers so this black color over here it has a unique number of it now you can see that uh, if I try to drag the color picker around I mean on the colors you can see that the numbers automatically I mean generate in the color window so now the red the R stands for red the G stands for green and the B stands for uh, blue so now uh, the 142 that we see for the R and this 87 that we see for the G and 87 that we see for the B that is blue means that the amount of red in the color that you have picked is 142 the amount of green is 87 and the amount of blue is 87 and that is giving you the color here so we can see that the more you drag the more the amount of red green and blue change so that is how we use it to collect color data from users now let's move on so let's clean this one we also have an input with the type file we use this very input with a type file when we want the user to submit a file from his end into our database so sometimes uh you will be you find yourself uploading your profile picture or updating something or uploading your cv so sometimes you find yourself like uh, submitting a pdf file or any file on the internet so that thing was done with the input with the type file so here we can change this question it has been there for long we can change it and say like submit or let's say change your profile picture something like this that is an input with the type file so when the user when the user clicks on the button that is that is this one the computer automatically brings up a window so that the user can submit a file so when you see these things on the internet this thing was done by the input with the type file so if we should click on it 
you can see that uh, our a small window is opened where we can choose any file and you can see that uh, the name of the file is here that is uh, something something dot mp4 and you can choose it and we can submit it so i hope now you are getting the point or you are, you are getting the view of how all these things are done now let's cover two more input types and let's get done with this very video now remember that uh, there are several other input types which we didn't cover because as a programmer you won't be finding yourself using them a lot so you can do your own research on that so now let's move on we also have an input with the type an input with the type search this input with the type search is used when we want the user to search for a particular information or a piece of data so uh, if you visit google the search bar in which you type your data to search for something normally we call it a keyword that is the search bar in which you type your keyword has an input with a type search now let's go ahead and see how it is so now you can see that uh, it is an input field and you can type something now as soon as you start you start to type something you can see you can get you can see the close button over here which we click on it for everything to disappear so that is an input for the type search Be, feel, feel free to play around this thing so that uh, you can get it in your head because that is how coding is so now let's move on we also have an input with the, this one is actually not an input but we consider it as an input we have an element called test area test area like this now the test area has a whole lot of attributes it has the name attribute which we are going to delete it has the id attribute which we use them in javascript and ph uh, sorry javascript and css and uh, it has columns as attributes and the columns has a value of 30 we will explain that thing and it also has rules as an attribute with a value of 10 so now let's explain what we use this test area for the test area uh, element is uh, we use it when we want I mean this is a place where we allow the user to type the body of the message so when you are submitting an email message the place where you type the body of the message now you can see that uh, the email compose box it has a place where you type your email address the recipient address and the subject and sometimes you can see uh, CC for carbon copy and uh, BBC for blank carbon copy and down there you will see a very big space where you will type the entire message where you want to send and this is done with the test area element now you can see when we come back to our browser you can see that uh, we have a very big input field displayed by the browser that the test area and that is where we type the body of the message that we want to to send it is very simple and very easy so now uh, let's uh, try to create an email field with the knowledge that we have had so first of all we will need an input with the type test and we can give it and we will give it a placeholder that says uh, enter your name so a placeholder that says a placeholder so we say placeholder that says your name something like this 
and let's copy this one and paste it down and let's change the type from test to email and let's change the placeholder from enter your name to enter email and uh, let's call another input with a type test and let's give it a placeholder of a subject that is a the subject of the message which you are sending and let's call our test area and uh, let's give it a placeholder of uh, let's say type message here type message here and uh, let me drag this thing here type message here and finally let's give it a button a button that says let's give it a button that says send message something like that now let's go back to our, our browser to see what you've done now this is what you've done it looks very very scary now let's add some css to get something very nice so let's come into our head element and add some css styles to to get things nice as we want so inside our head element let's call the style and let's say form and let's say uh, this sorry display is flex and uh, flex direction is color and let's give it a gap that is space between the element gap of one rim and let's give it a width of uh, a width of 30 percent so with 30 percent and uh, a margin of margin of auto so that it stays in the middle so now this is what we have over here so now this input was made from the input with the type test email and subjects and all these things so now you've got an idea of how all these things were done so i said we will be talking about the we'll be talking about the test areas attribute over here that is the row and that is the column and the row attributes of the test area now the the column is when we want to reduce the vertical section of the test area that is here that is the vertical section of this test area when we want to reduce it is when we will do the so now let's go ahead now you can see that if i change this 30 to let's say 10 let's go back to our browser okay let's uh undo this thing that is let's comment them out now that's how we comment in uh, css or html that is a uh, control forward slash will give you a comment and let's get back to our browser so now you can see that uh, our test area has been small because we have reduced the column attribute to 10 so that is the vertical section of the test area if we should increase it to let's say 100 or we'll go back to our browser you can see that our test area has been very long and uh, the row attribute is for the horizontal section of the test area so let's say if we reduce it to five when we go back to our browser you can see that it has been very very tiny so that is the duties of the column attribute 
and the row argument. It's like that of uh, Microsoft Excel, if you are familiar with them. Okay, so this is where we end successfully. Thank you for watching and please make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so.